let my own word locate me today, Jesus. Let my own word locate me today, Jesus. When the word of Joseph came, he experienced a dramatic turnaround. Send me my word today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. Father, thank you again for bringing us into your presence. Thank you for what you have prepared for us. Now, grant each one today the grace to take full delivery of their own portion. Let no one return from this service without a story to tell. As we have prayed, settle everyone today in their areas of unsettlement. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. I have dominion. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be comfortably seated. Walking in dominion has been a series of teaching for Sunday services for the month of February. And all we're trying to do is to see how to actualize our dominion birthright, what it takes to actualize it. And I have no doubt that God has been touching each one's life in some unique way. Nothing settles a man like living by the settled word of God. Psalm 119, verse 89. Forever, O oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. You can't be living by the settled word and still remain unsettled. God's word is settled in heaven forever. And living by the settled word of God settles people in all areas of their lives. And that word lives and abides forever. Walking in dominion by engaging the fire of the world. This book appears like letters and graved on papers. What is fire? It's also fire. Remember in the beginning was the world, the world was God, and the world was God. John 1, 1 to 3. That same was the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And who is God? A consuming fire. For our God is what? A consuming fire. And the word was God. So the word is a consuming fire. So every encounter with the fire of the world establishes your dominion in the kingdom of the wild. There is no beast that does not recognize the dominion of fire. The king of the beast called lion will never challenge the dominion of fire. Never. When fire breaks out, they flee from their den. Flee. Where are you going, Lion? Like ah, where am I going? <laughs> you don't know fire. Fire doesn't know lion, has no respect for any beast. So when 
you encounter the fire of the world, all the wild beasts flee from you. Flee for their dear life. This is so important. The fire of the world. In Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20, we saw the picture of the principalities there. He said, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. The beast was taken, and the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that watched the beast's image. This boat were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So we have the picture of Satan and powers as beasts. Beasts. You remember Satan showed up first time as a serpent. And the serpent was more subtle than any other animal that the Lord God made. So the demonic world is spiritually painted as an animal world. It's a world of the white. Is a world of the white. And the cheapest way to break the pride of the white is fire. 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 Zero resistance. No attempt to resist. The dominion of fire in the kingdom of the white is irresistible. Is unstoppable. Ooh. Ooh. And boom, 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 boom. you know, a lion generates around this uh, den to demarcate this is my territory, don't dare me. But when fire comes, the urine and the urinator, urinator everybody. <laughs> stays clear. Now, I want you to believe God for encounters with the fire of his world. It will keep your environment as a no-go area for principalities and powers. The fire of the world. The world you receive and you can't bear. You, you just step out. Unstoppably. In Jeremiah 23 and verse 29, we read here, it's not my word as a fire and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Fire. Fire. My word is as a fire. So there is the fire realm of revelation. How do I know when I encounter the fire of the world? Reve Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. He said, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name, or in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Now, it sets you into motion, that's what I mean. The fire of the world sets you uncontrollably into motion. You begin to say the unsayable. <laughs> Amen. You begin to take unbelievable steps by the fire of the world. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus and Mark chapter 1 verse 12 is and the spirit drive at him. The fire of the world drives those who encounter it. It drives. It's like fire shot up in your bones. You can't be quiet. You 
can't be docile. Amen. Amen. The fire of the world. We must train level. You got enough principles. You got some quiet revelation. But you need the fire to command dominion in the kingdom of the world. The things I say, they are not things you want to program me to say. They are things that fire drives you to say. Amen. Can you imagine getting to a town and saying, Jesus, I don't want to ask anybody where these fellows are. <laughs> Holy Spirit, if you are truly the guy, take me to where they are. That's fire. That's not a principle. That's fire. It's a drive. And you didn't ask nobody and you saw people. Hello? You didn't ask anybody. When I scream, yeah, I can never be sick. That's fire. That's not revelation. Revelation will be confessing and confessing. Fire is declaring and taking command. Yes, sir. Now it's 40 years I've been running that risk. How many years? <laughs> what a wonderful list to run. When this fire comes, all white beasts stay clear. Now in the name of Jesus, no one here shall be tormented by white beasts again. The fire of the world. Its dominion in the kingdom of the white is irresistible and unquestionable. Irresistible and unquestionable. Therefore, today, I decree from henceforth, you never lack access to the fire of the world again. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me have your loudest amen. Yeah. As believers, we are in a running battle against the beast. Of hair. You know, Satan came down and his demons with him, they were cast into the earth. And they came down here as beasts. In Ezekiel 34, verse 25, and I will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. So we are living in a world of the wide. Our security is to stay on fire. Our security is to be on fire. Praise God. And then they stay off. You know why we engage in uh, bonfire in campus? To keep the white beast away. It's not about cold now, but about security. So. You keep the bonfire on, the Boy Scouts are put on a roaster. You start throwing new wood into it to keep the bonfire high so that the white beast can stay off, stay away from you. The moment it keeps going down and you are all asleep, the white beast will come there. Let's see what kind of red thing is there. And he gets out to find human flesh that is uh, available for eating. Consume them. But with the fire of the world, the devil lives alone. The devil lives alone. You know what came down on the day of Pentecost? The fire of the world. They were pricked in their hearts. You know the word prick? That's fire. When Peter was on fire. On fire with the world. Those who are words of fire, they were not just teachers. They were words of fire. Those who are words of fire. And it freed them in their heart. And 3,000 people turned their life over to Jesus. May your access to the fire of the world open up today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen.
may that word going to talk make you a pillar of fire in this kingdom of the wide where we live. There is no animal in the wild that does not fear fire. From now, everything you used to fear, as you begin to pray by the word of fire, shall begin to fear you. If you check closely that Ezekiel 34 verse 25, you'll find us, we are said to be I mean, we shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. That's where we live spiritually. We are living in a kingdom of the wild. Full of evil beasts. These evil beasts are in, forms of, in form of witches, wizards, principalities, powers, occultic forces. There are all kinds of wickedness in dark places. Somebody came here sometimes, 2000, and he came here with his enchantment and was pressing and pressing the remote. It wasn't working. He saw cloven tongue of fire on everyone in church. Everything he was pressing was answer. So when I made us a call, he jumped up, came up and gave his life to Christ and shared his testimony of where he came from. Amen. You know why you should be in church? In case you don't have fire, you come in here, the fire here comes on your head. Yeah. We've been talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. We've never been talking about the fire of the world. The fire of the world is the real fire that establishes your dominion in the kingdom of the white. You will never suffer the affliction of the wicked again. Amen. When I call the fire of seated far above, I had a meeting with old people in my place and I said, I've been told of the wicked things that you do here. If I hear Peke from today, you will know that a greater than you all and the person of Jesus lives in me. Goodbye. Come and say fire. Fire. That's no less uh, discourse. There's no discussion. Fire is the end of discussion. When you are dealing with white beasts, what's the end of discussion? Fire. What's the end of discussion? Fire. Fire is the end of discussion. The fire of the world. It delivers you from fear. Mm. There is no way fire will fear any animal. Hello? If fire were a personality, you say, what do you fear most among the beasts? He say, which beast? Ask the beasts themselves whether I fear any of them. No. Where engulfed with the fire of the world, you become supernaturally fearless. Supernaturally fearless. I command an end to your fears. Because the things you don't fear cannot befall you. He said the thing that I greatly fear has come on me. Job Chapter 3, verse 24 and 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Fire never fears any beast. Fire never fears any beast. And is my word not as fire? With the fire of the world, your fear is dead. I pray that this will be the experience of every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. When the fire of the world breaks out, all evil bees take cover. Have you come to this world before the time? Luke chapter 4, verse 33 and 34. Let us alone. What have we to do with you? Are thou come to destroy us? I know Jesus is the living world. And the world is fire. And fire destroys. Every evil beast on his path. So that evil beast cried out. Those evil beasts cried, have you come to this world before the time? From now, everything you used to fear will start to fear you. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear you loudest. Yeah. Amen. As the fire of the world breaks forth from our souls, all evil beasts must have to flee from their hiding places. Amen. No matter where you are hiding, as fire engulfs the mountain, <laughs> you jump out. Jump out straight. That's the word of the Lord. Also among others, the fire of the world spiritually purifies us. Every chaff around anyone's life as the fire of the world comes, they are consumed and you can't see them anymore. Every habit you hate to see, before this month is over, you won't see them again in your life. Fire refines our destiny. Proverbs chapter 17, or chapter 27 verse 21. Proverbs 27 and verse 21. As the fine pot for silver and as the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. The more of the fire of the world we encounter, the more dignified our life becomes. The fine pot is for silver. The furnace is for gold. And so is a man to his praise. So the level of the fire of the world at work in us is what determines our level of dignity and nobility in the kingdom. Fire purifies. Fire refines. Fire purifies destiny. Fire refines destiny. And like we have said over and again, fire establishes a dominion in this wicked world of the white. We know that we have God and we know that the whole world lies in wickedness, carpeted with evil beasts everywhere. But fire establishes a dominion in this wicked world of the white. Therefore, everyone being troubled, being tormented by any evil beast, by the fire of the world coming from this altar, I decree your rescue today. Yeah. With the fire of the world at work in you, nobody will be chasing you about in your sleep. <laughs> nobody. Why bees don't chase fire? Fire chases them. Why bees don't chase fire? Fire chases them. I therefore decree your life and your environment as a no-go area for the white bees of hell. And so shall it be. On this covenant day of settlement, I want us to know that being born again is a fundamental requirement for our all and settlement in life. Remember, 
Jesus knew no sin, but became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. Now, in Isaiah 32, we are told in verse 17, and the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be what? Quietness and assurance forever. Peace, quietness, equal settlement. Peace, quietness, quietness. Those are the features of righteousness which Christ has made us. So when we are born again, we are entitled to settlement because we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Jesus said to us, my peace I give unto you. John 14, 27, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My peace is your portion in redemption. And that's why peace is also one of the fruits of the Spirit. Now, it's not enough to be saved. You must know that that is part of your redemptive package. You don't know it. You suffer for not knowing it. Ignorance is not an excuse in law. Peace is your entitlement in redemption. What is it? One of the songs we are taught in our growing up days in the faith. I got peace like a river, peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river, peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. It's part of your redemptive package that you should be conscious of. Peace. 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 The gospel of Jesus is the gospel of peace. Peace. That's your portion. So it takes redemption to be entitled to settlement a life of peace and quietness. Assurance forever. As a many. To be entitled to settlement, one must have to return back to God in case he or she has disconnected. He has to return. For in returning shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. For thus saith the Lord, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength, and ye will not. But he said, No, we will flee upon horses. Verse 16 and 17. But he said, No, we will flee upon horses, therefore shall ye flee. We will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. And verse 17. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. In returning, you will find rest. In returning, you will find rest. Yeah. I wish they had video that time during the 
the experience of the prodigal son to see what he went through when he left his father's house. And I came down to below sea level and found his way back like a madman, no dress on his back. The father said, can that be my son? Eh? Oh. But he received him back anyway. So you can't walk away from God and no peace. It doesn't matter your title or your rank or your status. Don't think that all those people sitting there in the car, uh, air condition, cool condition, everything. Don't think they have peace. Many of them are sweating inside that cool. <laughs> some are on Valium 10. Some Valium 20. And you know Valium is also graduating because as you resist one, they do another one. Amen. But there are people here, sir, that God has lifted and lifted and lifted and they are still living like a baby. Return unto me and I will return unto you, says the Lord. Return. You want rest? Return. The prodigal son did not only have rest, he became a celebrity. Return. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. Now, the sorrow of them that hasten after another God shall be multiplied. So I don't care where you go. The sorrow will keep multiplying. You go from God. Anywhere you go to is from frying pan to another one to fire. And again, frying pan, another one to fire. Until there's nothing to fry anymore. You won't suffer that in your life. Yeah. To actualize your settlement right in Christ enter into a covenant to keep serving him as they entered that covenant he gave them rest run about he gave them what? rest he settled them all round verse 12 of 2 Corinthians chapter 15 and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul and in verse 15 and all Judah rejoice at the oath because they are sworn with all their heart and sought him with the, their whole desire and he was found of them and the Lord gave them rest, run about. When God becomes your priority for living, you enjoy run about rest. Run about rest. Run about rest. Run about rest. Run. It's and all these things that others are dying to get shall be freely added to you. There is no scriptures of any private interpretation. Every scripture applies to whosoever believes. It applies to whosoever finds it, receives it, and believes it. It's not that God so like that man, he's so like that, uh, uh, my sister so like that, but me, he doesn't like me. You didn't like yourself. You didn't. There are no scriptures of any private inter. What I say to you, I say to all. So you can't enter into that covenant in truth and in deed and not find all unrest. I got there September 12, 1976. I'm still there, can't we? It is, is strong, it's thick. Is unyielding. It always works. Always works. Always works. There is nothing about my life but covenant alignment. Covenant alignment. You know when you are, your tires are not aligned, it will wear out very fast. 
So you go to where they help you to align it. <laughs> Many are wearing out very fast. They are not covenantly aligned. They are not alive. Look. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He shall bless your bread and your water. And I, God, will take sickness away from you. There shall none be barren among you that are serving me. No, because they are young in the land. And the number of your days I vow to fulfill. That's God. Now, you might be serving him and not know that those are part and parcel of your returns. You may not know. Because everybody is a partaker of his hope. What you don't know, you can partake of. You can partake of. And don't let any circumstances make the word of God of no effect in your sight. Don't. Anybody can be challenged. But you are not permitted to be defeated. You are not permitted to be defeated. You are not permitted. He said, all the days of my life will I wait until my change comes. Did they come or not? Did this change come or not? All the days of my appointed time, Job said, will I wait until my change comes. Did this change come or not? You say one small thing, oh God, is this how you're going to treat me? Okay, okay. All the days, as long as I have my breath, I will wait. Because I know that my change is coming. How many are too sure that their desired change is coming? How many are too sure that they are going to be settled today? And look, sir. There are many, many people today, Matthew 6 and 3, in this church has become their life wire. Everything about their life revolves around that, revolves around it in grand styles. In grand styles, it works. I wasn't a pastor when I encountered that. You don't have to be no pastor or apostle or prophet. God's word works the same way for all people. For how many people? God is no respecter of persons. And his word is no respecter of persons. You don't have to be a pastor, a senior pastor, a junior one, a medium one. No. <laughs> you don't have to be a founder. Just be a member of the body of Christ and walk in the word. What do I say? Walk in the world. Walk in the world. Walk in the world. Walk in the world. All this, pray for me, pray for me. You don't need all this. I was also once a little baby, a little Christian. I wasn't running around collecting prayer up and down. No. No. Even when I pray for people right now, I just finished praying for them. Come and I will pray. They will stick I Even what he came for, I mentioned it in that prayer. <laughs> but I must just pray for him. You better take responsibility. So I got myself off to back losses. Hello. 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 On that six months I was saved. But I consumed the whole New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first three months. You have not read one verse. How long will you be running around? I said, Jesus, if it's true that you did all that you did, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do it now. Oh, ah. He said, make you no verse. He removed tuberculosis from my life like a dream of the night. You, you, how long are you going to be a baby Christian? He said, pray for him. I said, why? He said, my uncle. I pray for your uncle. Go to Faith Academy. Let them pray for you there. Those students in GSS1, they will pray for you. Amen. One of them met me the other time and said, sir, I pray for this person and he's now doing as if he's not healed. That was the year 2000. Young student. I said, why are you doing as if you are not here? <laughs> he brought it because my office was there with them. I said, faith academics were praying for people. And then they have to pray for you for everything. Pray for me. I said, well, my nose is paining me. And I told you, I even carried the chair on my head. He took your infirmity. He said, no way, you must pray for me too. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. That's over. Because this is your year of dominion. Now, every scripture you find, ask Jesus, turn 
turn this into fire in my life. Turn this word into fire in my soul. Turn this word into fire in my bones. Let it dictate my steps, dictate my words, dictate my actions. Turn this into fire. And then you find your dominion in place. Now, can I tell you this? If you don't get Matthew 6.33, you have lost more than 50% of what this liberation man there carries. That's where the key is. That is what commits God to your liberty. He commits God to your freedom. He commits God to your destiny. He commits God to your posterity. He commits God to your children and your future. He commits you to... He said, let my son go that he may serve me. If you don't let him go, I will kill your son because I must free my son. That's how committed God is to those who are serving him. Israel is my son, he's my firstborn. And let my son go that he may serve me. Pharaoh, stubborn-hearted, hardened Pharaoh. Let my son go. If you don't let him go, I will kill your son, I vow. Because I am, I, I, I've already vowed to set free my son. And this is a liberation mandate to set you free. If you will serve him, sir. In truth and in deed, no devil in hell can stop God from setting you free. The good news is, everybody in any form of bandage you are walking into liberty today. If they will obey and serve him, what happens? They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That settlement coming from this table of steadfastness in still worship, serving God with utmost delight, with joy and gladness, not carrying problems on your head. He's the problem solver. Obey him. He will solve your problems. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. And what an opportunity you can serve him effectively on the prayer altar, praying for every service, praying for challenge members that you know, praying for souls to be saved, praying for them to be established in the faith, serving God like Anna did. He was serving God with prayer and fasting daily. Luke chapter 2 verse 37. You serve him by getting out there on the streets and talking to people about Jesus and helping them to find the light. You serve God in your various service units. You are, you are not just sitting down watching. You are engaging to secure God's commitment to the affairs of your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All these things. Your father knows you need them. All these things shall be added unto you. Give the Lord praise, everybody. As we begin to round up. By redemption, no child of God is permitted to suffer beyond a why or a moment. After you have suffered a why, not beyond a why, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and say to you, so you are not permitted to suffer beyond a moment. Beyond a while. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. For our light affliction, which is but for what? But for a moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whatever has gone therefore beyond a why and a moment in your life comes to an end this morning. That unsettled family is settled today. Your unsettled son and daughter, they are settled today. Your unsettled career is settled today. Your unsettled health is settled today. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, 
I have had you in the time accepted. In the day of salvation, I've so called thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. When? When are you due for settlement? He said, and today is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. We serve a now God. We serve what? Now, I, I'm telling you the truth in Christ. He settled me on September 12, 1976. Anxieties came to an end. Uncertainties came to an end. The assurance of tomorrow was so strong. Was so strong. He just said to me, It's not tomorrow. He said to me that day. As I finished writing that stuff, covenant, he said to me, I knew I was settled. Many will be settled here today. As the Lord lived before the half, first half of the year is over, every unsettled issue around your life shall be supernaturally settled. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 59. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 59 is among the causes listed. He said, The Lord will make thy plague wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Anything of long continuance is a cause. Anything of long continuance is a cause. Anything of long continuance is a cause. But Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law by being made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth upon the tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come unto us who are injected and may receive this gift, the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, you have been redeemed from the cause of long continuance. Come and say, I've been redeemed. From the cause of long continuance of unsettlement. I have been redeemed from the cause of long continuance of affliction. Therefore, now is my day of salvation. My settlement is now. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. This is how God will set you. For the year of the day of vengeance in my heart. Because the year of my redeemed is come. So vengeance must be executed to establish your settlement. <laughs> Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every force behind your unsettlement in life is judged today. Every wild beast behind your unsettlement in any area of your life, they are judged today. Every gang up of hair against your settlement in life falls for your sake today. For surely they shall gather together, but not by me. And everyone that gathers together against you shall fall for your sake. So every gang up against your settlement falls for your sake today. 
every gang up against the settlement of your children, your sons and your daughters, falls for your sake today. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Saying, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulations to them that trouble you. Today, I decree tribulations upon your troublers. How many believe Nigeria is about due for settlement? You know, one step forward, 100 steps backward. How, for how long? For how long? For how long? You hardly can pick progress in any, any area. You can't let them pick it. Yes, those people are making progress by the covenant. But how long? How long? The ordinary election we cannot manage. No, that this is the truth. And year in, year out, regime after regime. How long? How long? How long? Will you be having results before election is carried out? How long? How long? Nigeria is long overdue for settlement. Therefore, on this covenant day of settlement, while your own is primary. Nigeria shall be supernaturally settled. You can't tell how many people traveled to their various homelands to go and vote. You can't tell how many had accidents. Is Nigeria not long overdue for settlement? God recompense tribulation for all that trouble in the desert of Nigeria. It's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Wherever they may be within the country, outside the country. All the troublers of this nation, I invoke tribulation upon your life. All that won't let this nation go forward, you go down for this nation. Thank you, Father. But by all means, God will give peace to Nigeria. He said, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. He has more means than we know. By whatever means, Jesus, let this nation not see war. Let there be no more bloodshed in our country. Secure the future of our children. Judge all the troublers of this nation. And judge them today. More often than not, until vengeance shows up, the wicked never gives up. Until God came down and slew all the firstborn of Egypt, they won't let God's people go. Lord, let your vengeance answer for the rescue of our nation today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
as we engage the mercy of the anointing oil today, every yoke of unsettlement in our lives shall be destroyed. Today, the yoke of sickness, unsettled health, marital spells, divinations and enchantments, respond for the unsettlement of many shall be destroyed today. I have found David myself, my holy oil ever anointed him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foot before his face and plague all them that hate him. You will not see evil anymore. You shall not see evil anymore. In the same vein, every barren area of our lives, physical barrenness, business, career barrenness, shall experience a spiritual return around today. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus.